Good morning. Good morning. This is Pastor Joseph of House of Praise, Church of the Living God. We want to thank each and every one of you for tuning in to our broadcast this morning, to our worship service. We hope that the experience you have today will be enlightening. There is a word from the Lord on today. We ask that you go ahead and prepare your heart, mind, and soul to receive the word of the Lord on today. Amen. We pray your strength in the Lord. We pray that you will keep your eyes on the prize, and that is Jesus Christ. This race is not given to the swift nor to the strong, but to the one who endures to the end, to the one who stays focused, to the one who remains undistracted, to the one who finished the assignment that God has given him. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, we thank you for allowing us to be here this morning. We thank you for those that are watching by way of YouTube. We thank you that you woke them up this morning, yes. that you gave them another opportunity, that you gave us another opportunity to get our life in good standing yes, with you. Lord. If we've offended you, Lord, or anyone, or caused anyone to fall by the wayside, knowingly or unknowingly, have mercy have upon us. Father, let us receive this word in the spirit of truth. Yes, Holy Spirit, you are welcome into this service. Yes. You are welcome into this broadcast. You are welcome into the hearts of your people. Yes, Lord. And we lift you up, Lord, yes, Jesus. that you may be glorified from our actions. Yes, I feel Jesus. I feel Jesus. I feel Jesus in this place. Yes, my soul does burns within me. I feel Jesus in this place. I feel love. I feel love. I feel love in this Scripture reading is coming from Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1 through 4. To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time 
to dance. May the Lord add a blessing to the hearers and readers and doers of his precious word. Let us pray. Our Father, we come this morning to say thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for another opportunity to come together to worship and praise you on today. There was somebody this morning that wanted to get up and praise God, but they couldn't bless them wherever they could be. And Father, I want to take the time to lift up all of the sick and all the shut-ins this morning. I want to send a special prayer out to Brother Martin Williams right now. Father, touch his body because he really needs you right now. Touch his body and heal him from the top of his head to the sole of his feet. Let your will be done, Father, on earth as it is in heaven. And I also want to lift up Sister Williams as well. Give her the strength, oh Heavenly Father, to take care of her husband because she needs you as well. Lift up her whole entire family this morning. And I also want to lift up a special prayer to Mrs. Tangela Taylor. Touch her right now and heal her body. Father, show her some mercy and some grace. Because she made a mistake, Lord, and you're the only one that can help her through this situation. So I'm lifting her up to you right now, oh Heavenly Father. And I also want to lift up my new boss as well, Miss Allen. Touch her right now. Give her the wisdom and give her the knowledge that she needs to be the best director that she can possibly be. And lift us all up, oh Heavenly Father. Lift up the man of God as well that you have given us. Continue to feed him, Lord, with more wisdom and more knowledge and more understanding of your word. And Father, help us to be a light unto this dark and dying world. Teach us, Lord, how to be fishers of men. And Father, I want to lift up all of my neighbors as well this morning. Bless them in a mighty way. Touch it, Lord, from the top of their head to the soul of their head. And Father, bless all of those that are watching us this morning by YouTube. Strengthen them, Lord. Open up their heart, ears, and mind to receive what you have to say to them on today and to us as well. And bless all of my family. Bless my daughter and my grandchildren. Continue to keep them strong. Healthy, no sickness or disease to overtake their lives, Lord, and continue to lift me up as well, and let me be a light into this dark and dying world. Holy Spirit, you are welcome into this service on today. Come in and abide with us and have your way in this service. And I thank you, Jesus, for everything you're doing and what you want to do. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. To God be the Lord. When we all get to heaven, right, a day of rejoicing there will be. When we all see Jesus. We'll sing and shout for victory. Come on now. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout for victory. All right. When we all get to heaven, Yes, you 
today. Don't be discouraged. Don't be distracted by what you see in the news. Maybe some things you're experiencing in your life. The current situation in your life is just temporary. Keep your eye on the prize. Amen. And that's Jesus. Amen. God will see you through. Yes, he will. He never promised that everything would be easy. Amen. That everything would be smooth. That everything will be peaceful. He promised to give you peace. That's right. In the Amen. Midst of your storm. Amen. Pastor. You got to make sure that you're making godly decisions and godly choices. Yes, Lord. And that you're doing things God's way. Yes, the worst kind of suffering one can endure is a self inflicted suffering. When you're doing things that's causing harm to come to yourself, yes, Lord. That's the worst kind of suffering because that's not even the devil, that's not even God. Those are consequences of your bad actions. Amen. So we want to correct that today. The whole purpose of church is to make man complete Amen. in Christ. Amen. God want to make you whole. That's right. You know, healing is part of his ministry too, but what does it profit a man if he get healed but he never get made whole? That's right. What does it profit a man if he get his, his disease cured but he lose his soul? Mm -hmm. So God uh, want to make us whole. Want to make sure that we live in a life that's pleasing to God and a wholesome life. Amen. And not only do you want to be saved, but you want everyone in your family, your friends, and your community to be saved. That's right. Or a better word, to be whole. Amen. Because when you're whole, when you leave here, you're going to be with the Lord. That's but there is a word from the Lord on today. Amen. And I'm, I can tell you that unless you tune in next Sunday, you're not going to get the whole lesson because I'm not going to finish because it's so much. Amen. But it's something that God inspired me to write to encourage you in the Lord. Amen. And I have a lot of stuff that I want to go over today, but some good, wholesome stuff. 
Amen. Some stuff that's going to make you a better believer mm -hmm. or person of Christ. That's if you right. will take heed to the word of the Lord, because the Bible says that the word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than a two-edged sword. Amen. And it appears to the dividing of the soul. That's right. That word will make you whole. Amen. That word will lead you down the right path. That word will lead you to Christ. Yes, it will. And so I want to talk from a topic today. The wrong kind of cherish. The wrong kind of cherish. Things we cherish. That's what we're going to be talking about today. Amen. And make sure the things that you cherish are beneficial to you spiritually and eternally. Amen. Amen. I don't like cotton candy, Sister Joseph, because it don't benefit me no kind of way. Amen. All it does is leave a sweet taste in my mouth. That's it. I don't care how much I put in my mouth, it never fills my belly up because cotton candy immediately dissolves when it hits your mouth. That's right. So I don't like cotton candy because it's not fulfilling. Amen. I can eat a whole truckload and still be home. Amen. All it does is leave a sweet tooth in our mouth. That's it. And a lot of y'all are wasting time on things that's not beneficial to you spiritually and eternally. Amen. And so as a believer, we want to do things that benefit us and glorify God. Amen. We want to do things that benefit us and give God the glory. That's right. When you're not saved, it really don't matter how you live that's because right. you're not saved. That's right. But when you get saved, everything matters. Amen. Amen. Because we want to be vessels of honor fit for the master's use and above all, we want to be pleasing to God. Amen. I mean, that's what my mission is. That's what your mission ought to be, pleasing to God. Because Jesus is the one that saved us. That's right. And since he's the one that saved us, he is the one that I'm in, in debt to. And so I want to make sure I'm pleasing to God in all my actions. Amen? Amen. So I want to talk about today the wrong kind of cherish. We cherish the wrong thing sometimes. Not everything, but something. But anything that's not beneficial to you spiritually and eternally, today I want you to just do away with it. Amen. Amen. Jesus said, wherever your treasure is, your heart will be also. That's right. That's right. Wherever your treasure is, your heart will be also. Things that we love will captivate our heart. And if we love God, we should be a worshiper and a follower of God. Right. You don't have to tell nobody you're a Christian or that you love God. If you love God, other people going to know it. That's right. Amen? Amen. Apostle Paul had a young preacher he was mentoring named Timothy. And on two different occasions, he told a little young preacher what to follow. Let's just assume you that young preacher. And I'm Paul. And I'm instructing you in a positive manner because even though you're not a preacher, you're a child of God. Amen. And so all the children of God are God's children. Amen. And there's one rule for the house. But Paul was telling Timothy what to follow and what to arbor. Amen. And so I want to read a couple of scriptures before I get into my lesson. So the first scripture I want to read is 2 Timothy 2.22. 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 22. On two separate occasions Apostle Paul told a young preacher what he should follow and the things he should not follow or arbor or flee away from. And so we're going to use that as our teaching scriptures on today so we can use this lesson here as an example because the Bible says that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forevermore. And so this New Testament, so 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 22, Apostle Paul instructs the young preacher. He says, flee you for lust. I want you to flee, run away from you for lust. Amen. But follow after, watch this, righteousness, faith, charity, that's love, peace, with them that are called on the Lord out of a pure heart. Amen. That's what he told them to do. Amen. He said, Timothy, I want you to flee you for lust. Mm -hmm. Now, what is you for lust? You for lust does not necessarily mean 
sexual desires, although that could be included as one of them. But I looked it up in the Greek. It means to have various desires, different sorts of desires. There are different sorts of lust. One of them is a sexual lust, but there, there's all kind of lust that you have that's not godly. And all of them will get you in trouble with God. Some of us had a lust to reveal. If somebody can do something to us, we want to do what? Do something to them. That's right. The Bible say turn the other cheek. That's right. Or forgive your brother. Amen. Or go to your brother and tell him his fault. Some of us, you know, when we young, we hot here. You can't tell us nothing because we young and we think we know it all. That's a lust. Amen. Pride. That's a lust. Amen. Amen. Paul told Timothy to flee you for lust. Anything that'll get you in trouble with God or that won't enhance you spiritually or eternally, he say, flee those things, you for lust. Amen. You know, some of us when we young, we cock it. You, you, we think we can, we think we invincible. We think, you know, that's the that's the whole spirit of being youthful, being young. Mm -hmm. Amen. I remember I could play four, five, six games of basketball, play till the sun go down. At night, I can't do that now. I probably can't play one game now. Amen. Because I ain't youthful no more. Amen. Paul told Timothy to flee you for lust. Anything that'll get you in trouble with God, kill your spiritual growth, kill your spiritual growth, you're not growing no more because you got too many irons in the fire. That's right. You're doing too many things. Amen. And you're getting away from God. You're drifting. And you don't even see yourself drifting. That's right. Because you're chasing after the wrong thing. You're cherishing the wrong thing. Amen. I'm talking to somebody this morning. Amen. Amen. But he said, but follow after. Now watch the things he told him to follow after. As a young preacher. But follow after righteousness. Doing things the right way. Amen. Righteousness is the fruit of the spirit. Righteousness is of God. That's right. In other words, he tell him, be godly, young man. Amen. He said, Follow after faith. Have faith in God. That's right. Not in yourself. Amen. Not in your circumstances. Not in your ability to get things done. Have faith in God. He said, have faith. Follow after faith. That's another one. See, that's going to benefit him spiritually and eternally if you place your faith in God. We place our faith in everything but God, and it always comes back to haunt us. That's right. Amen, Pastor. Talking Amen. to somebody today. Amen. He told him, he said, follow after righteousness, follow after faith, follow after charity, say, follow after love. Amen. Be loving to people. Amen. Be a loving person. Amen. Love and forgive people. Yes. Walk in love, because your God is what? Love. There's too many mean, hateful Christians. Amen. Amen. We say we love God, but we won't do nothing for nobody. That's right. That's right. We're not loving and we're not kind and we're not grateful. Amen. I'm talking to somebody. Amen. Paul told that young preacher to follow after righteousness, faith, charity, which is love. He said, follow after peace. Mm -hmm. Always look for peace in the situation. You want the peace of God to dwell in your life. Not be a hell raiser all your life. <laughs> Some of us are hell raisers. We trying to a, a mole hill to a mountain. Amen. We blow up everything. Amen. Because we build and we angry. That's right. At what? That's right. That's right. Preach Turn to God. Amen. It's not too late. Amen. Give it to God. Let God help you. Amen. Put pride aside. Yes. I'm talking to somebody. Yes. Thank you. He says, with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. Yes, Lord. A pure heart. You should cherish that. A lot of us got double hearts. We That's mean. Right. That's right. And we deceitful. Amen. And we practice deceit. Mm -hmm. And we ain't calling on the Lord out of a pure heart. We calling on God because we want some stuff. We need some stuff. We seeking some stuff. But it ain't God. It's just his blessings. That's right. Amen. On two different occasions, Apostle Paul instructed this young preacher. That's the first occasion. And he told him to flee you for lust. Flee or arbor or get rid of anything that will hinder your relationship with God or cause you to stop growing in God. That's right. And you ought to look at your life tonight to this morning. And you know if you're growing in the Lord or not. Amen. You know if you're growing in the Lord or not. 
And we should always be growing in the grace and the knowledge, the Bible says, of the Lord Jesus Christ. Right. Always growing in the grace and the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Becoming more Christ-like and more wise like him. Amen. That's what we should be doing. Amen. Now, that's the first time. I haven't gotten to my lesson yet. That's the first time Paul instructed Timothy. Let's look at it, uh, the second occasion. 1 Timothy chapter 6. 1 Timothy chapter 6. We're going to focus on verse 10 through 12. Now listen what he's saying. I'm not teaching about money. I'm just telling you how he's telling Timothy to focus on the right things and what to follow after and what to harbor or what to uh, uh, take out of his life. Or don't let these things pull you away from your ministry or your calling. And if you watch it by way of YouTube, don't let certain things, people, and situations pull you away from your ministry or your calling or your Christian lifestyle. Amen. If you make a decision to walk away from God, let it be your choice. Don't let circumstances or your evil desires or being selfish pull you away from God. First Timothy chapter 6, verse 10 through 12, he says to Timothy, he's teaching this young preacher, for the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some, watch this, covered it out. See that word covered it? Amen. And the first time he told him, don't lust, flee you for lust. Now he's talking about covenant after. Mm -hmm. They have error from the faith and pierced them through themselves through with many sorrow. He said, for the love of money is the root of all evil. Amen. Which while some coveted after, they have error from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrow because they coveted that money, the love for that money. They made a lot of bad decisions. Amen. And error from the faith. When you love that money so much, or whatever it is, and you can substitute money because everybody ain't, ain't, ain't weak behind money. Amen. But whatever you love more than you love God, <laughs> it causes you to be in a condition you're in right now. Mm -hmm. Now, your error from the faith means you ain't walking in the will of God no more. Amen. That's what it means to error in the faith. Don't mean you're not going to heaven. Let's get that understood. That don't mean you're not going to heaven. But you're not doing things the way God would have you do it. Whatever it is that got you caught up or got you sidetracked, it was deception. The devil used that to get you out of the will of God. That don't mean you're not going to heaven. It just means your lifestyle is not pleasing to God because now you done got off track. Amen. It's just like a train on the track. If the train get off the track, it still got to deliver the products. Right. But in order to deliver the products, we got to fix the track and put the train back on the track. Look to your neighbor and say, you need to be back on the track. You done got off track. You know it and I know it. Amen. Because you start coveting and desiring things that led you away from God. That's right. As long as they don't lead you away from God, ain't nothing wrong with wanting to do better. That's right. Have more. Won't biggle. As long as it don't sidetrack you and cause you to error from the faith. He was telling this young preacher, don't get caught up. Because money going to be involved in ministry. Don't get caught up. Mm -hmm. Don't love that money because people going to give. Everybody ain't stingy. Some people give. Don't get caught up, Timothy. For the love of money is the root of all evil. Explain to him about that money. He already told him about his lust previously. Amen. Don't let your lustful and youthful desires carry you away from this ministry. And don't let that money carry you away from this ministry. Verse 11, but thou, O man of God, he reminded him that he was a Christian. I'm reminding you, if you're watching today, you're still a child of God. Amen. You're still a child of God. Amen. If you called on Jesus out of pure heart and you were sincere when you done it, you're still a child of God. You just fell off the track. You need to get back on track. That's right. That's right. Amen. Verse 11, he said, but thou, O man of God, flee these things. See, he told him to flee. Run from these things. That love of money told him to flee from these things and follow after. Now look, here you go again. Tell him what he needs to follow after. And the things he's going to tell him to follow after. And we want to use and substitute for that word follow. I want to say cherish. These are things you should be cherishing. Amen. Anything that don't enhance your spiritual life or you benefit from it eternally, that means the life after this life, always. But follow after, he said in verse 11, righteousness, there you go again, godliness, be God, Christ-like. 
Amen. Follow after faith, love. He said, follow after patience. He said, follow after meekness. He tell them, fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. Where a two thou are also called and has professed a good profession before many weeks. Now looking at the things he told them to follow after the second time he admonishes Timothy. He said, I want you to follow after or I want you to cherish these things. I want to say the word cherish because that's what my topic is. The wrong kind of cherish because we cherish the wrong things in life sometimes. That's right. But thou, old man, God, flee these things and follow after what? Righteousness, doing things the right way. Godliness, being Christ-like. Faith, have faith in God. Love, you know you got to be loved. Then say, follow after patience. What is patience? The ability to endure suffering without quitting. Listen at me. The ability to endure suffering or hardship without quitting. Amen. And I want to add it in there, and without blaming God. Amen. A lot of times we get mad at God. That's right. Amen. And we blame God for what we're going through. But it's not God. Because Jesus said, Lo, I'm with you always. I will never leave you or forsake you. That's right. When you're going through, God right there with you. You got to remember the words of Christ. That's right. He said, Follow after meekness. See, we talked about that earlier. Meekness means humble yourself. If you humble yourself, God will lift you up. But there's a lot of us, we full of pride. That's right. You'd be surprised, Sister Joseph, people that's not serving God no more because they prideful. Amen. Can't no preacher tell me what to do. Ain't no preacher going to tell me what to do. Amen. Well, it ain't the preacher telling you. The Bible says, how can he preach except he be sent? That's right. Amen. Preacher just don't preach. God called him to preach. How can he preach except he be sent? That's right. Amen. God called the preacher to do his bidding. Amen. I'm doing the bidding of the Lord. Amen. Look, he says, fight the good fight of faith. Fight the good fight of faith because your mind going to try to play tricks on you. Amen. The ghetto boys made a song called My Mind Playing Trick On Me. Your mind will try to play tricks on you, making you think this is more important than that. That's right. That's right. Amen. And you got to choose life, death and life. There are only two roads in life. The straight and narrow and the broad and wide. Choose the straight and narrow. Amen. Which leads to eternal life. Amen. He say fight the good fight of faith. A lot of us don't have no faith no more. That's true. Well, we got faith, but not in God. We'll listen to Oprah. We'll listen to Dr. Phil. We'll listen to Jerry Springer. We'll listen to anyone but the man of God. That's right. Then he says, fight the good fight of faith. He says, lay hold of eternal life. That's my most important one. Out of everything you